Delve into the depths of the First World War's maritime battlegrounds as we explore the game-changing and controversial strategy of unrestricted submarine warfare. Witness the rise of silent predators beneath the waves, defying conventions and unleashing devastation upon enemy fleets. Join us as we navigate the treacherous waters of history and reveal the haunting legacy of unrestricted submarine warfare in the Great War. Unrestricted submarine warfare is a type of naval warfare in which submarines sink merchant ships such as freighters and tankers without warning, as opposed to attacks per prize rules, also known as cruiser rules, that call for warships to search merchantmen and place crews in a place of safety, for which lifeboats do not qualify except under particular circumstances, before sinking them, unless the ship shows persistent refusal to stop or active resistance to visit or search. To follow the rules, a submarine must surface, defeating the purpose of submarines and putting itself in danger of attack. In early 1917, Germany still hadn't won the war and there was a stalemate on the battlefields of Western Europe, but Germany knew they were outproducing the Allies when it came to submarines and were still having success with their more careful policy. High Command wondered, if we began unrestricted submarine warfare again, could our blockade force Britain to surrender before the U.S. was able to declare war and get their troops over the seas? It was an incredibly risky plan, but German hawks believed they could starve Britain out in six months and the U.S. wouldn't make it in time. Ludendorff, practical ruler of Germany, made the decision, and in February 1917, unrestricted submarine warfare began. At the onset of the war, the German submarines adhered to the established rules of engagement for merchant ships. They would approach, issue warnings, allow passengers and crew to evacuate, and then proceed to sink the vessel. This approach, considering the circumstances of sending people off in vulnerable lifeboats and rafts with limited supplies and dependent on oars and ocean currents for travel, could be deemed relatively civilized in the context of warfare. Understandably, those aboard the merchant ships sought to avoid such harrowing experiences. Consequently, the British began arming their merchant vessels. This led to submarines being targeted as they surfaced, and the introduction of Q-ships made it even riskier for submarines to adhere to the rules often resulting in their own demise. The crews of submarines faced a high fatality rate when their vessels were sunk, which was an undesirable outcome. The introduction of Q-ships with concealed deck guns and many armed merchantmen lead Germany to ignore the prize rules. To avoid such dire consequences, German submarine commanders and their crews chose to engage in unrestricted submarine warfare, where they would attack merchant ships without warning. This decision set in motion a series of events that eventually drew the United States into World War I as an ally of the opposing forces. In the most dramatic episode, they sank Lusitania in 1915 in a few minutes accelerated either by a coal dust explosion or possibly an explosion in a munitions cargo she may have been carrying. The U.S. demanded it stop and Germany did so, but it was already too late. Admiral Henning von Holzendorf, chief of the Imperial Admiralty Staff, argued successfully in early 1917 to resume the attacks and thus starve the British. The German high command realized the resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare meant war with the United States, but calculated that American mobilization would be too slow to stop a German victory on the Western Front. Following Germany's resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare on February 1, 1917, countries tried to limit or even abolish submarines. The 1909 Declaration of London required submarines to abide by prize rules. These regulations did not prohibit arming merchantmen, but having them report contact with submarines or raiders made them de facto naval auxiliaries and removed the protection of the prize rules. This rendered the restrictions on submarines effectively useless. While such tactics increase the combat effectiveness of the submarine and improve its chances of survival, some regard them as a breach of the rules of war, especially when employed against neutral vessels in a war zone. At first, it was devastating, and as supplies in Britain dwindled, the head of the British Navy told his government they could not survive. But then two things happened. The British began using the convoy system, a tactic used in Napoleonic times but adopted now to group traveling ships into tough groups, and the U.S. entered the war. The convoys caused losses to reduce, German submarine losses increased, and the specter of U.S. troops finally broke the German will to continue after their last throw of the dice in early 1918. 
a move which occurred as the Germans tried a last land tactic before the U.S. arrived in force. Germany had to surrender. Versailles followed. After World War I, there was a strong push to construct international rules prohibiting submarine attacks on merchant ships. In 1922, the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan, France, and Italy signed the Washington Treaty on Poison Gas and Submarines to so restrict the use of submarines as to make them useless as commerce raiders. France did not ratify, so the treaty did not go into effect. In 1936, states signed the London Protocol on Submarine Warfare. Interwar prohibitions on unrestricted submarine warfare have been described as being too unspecified, thus leading to disagreements over how to interpret the rules and agreements. For example, it was unclear what differentiated merchant ships from military ships, in particular given that Britain wanted to retain the rights to arm its merchants. Furthermore, it was considered impractical for small submarines to take on the crews of non-combatant ships due to a lack of space. Crews could be placed in emergency boats, but there was disagreement as to how safe that was. Prior to World War II, 48 states had accepted the prohibitions on unrestricted submarine warfare including the great power combatants during the Second World War. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.